How do you decide which tech cards to play in Branded? Branded has been around for a long, long time. Throughout the three years this deck has been alive, it's been seeing so many tech options from Nadir Servant to Dragoon to Tier Lament's card, and now to White Forest, Light and Darkness, Dragon Lord, and of course, finally, that grass looks greener. So how can you decide which tech cards to play? Today, we're gonna be doing just that and explaining you and breaking down the top 10 tech options for Branded and why should you or shouldn't you play them? Before we begin, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel because you want to see more branded content. And let's begin with the first one, Nadir Servant. A quick reminder that my new branded sleeves are coming exclusively to Sleeve Chief on Sunday, September 22nd. These new and exclusive branded theme sleeves feature a brand new look of Blazing Cartesia and a Luber. So September 22nd at 8 p.m. CET or 2 p.m. Eastern only on sleevechief.de. And hey, you get an extra 5% off using code GALZO5. So Nadir Servant has been seeing a lot of play in branded in the past. This was one of the prime examples of how to play around Ash Blossom before people started to really lean into triple tactics thrust. You can go for Nadir Servant, dump something like Garura that can draw you a card, then go for Maximus, banish the Garura, get, you know, Titanic Land and Albion in the graveyard, which is sometimes a lot of value for Branded. Then you can summon Quem, you can set Branded in red, dump an Albus from the deck. It pretty much provides you with almost full combo through an Ash Blossom. I think the reason people kind of started to back off from the Deer Servant is the fact that you want sort of like instead of playing through Ash, which you really, really can if you know what you're doing, you know, you can go into lines that just don't lose to Ash Blossom. If you're versed with the deck, we've been running a lot of lines like this in our Branded Academy videos, so check them out. So instead, you might need to play cards like Warbreakers, Thrust, Droplet, Eclipse, cards that really provide value over Nadir, that if you do resolve Branded Fusion is just win more. And don't forget about the fact that Nadir Servant has a lot of, you know, investment in the extra deck. You need to be playing cards like Lulu Lilith and Garuro, which normally you wouldn't play. And of course, Maximus in the main deck. It's probably gonna go in the not worth it pile. Now, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon and Light and Darkness Dragon Lord, two Omni Negates that Branded have been playing for a while, one of them a little bit more relevant than the other. Red Eyes Dark Dragoon has been seeing a lot of play in cash tree format. The fact that it cannot be targeted, cannot be destroyed, and can be summoned using Lubelli on the Searing Dragon under Dimension Shifter. This was the main selling point for Dragoon, but Dragoon also came with a cost of discarding. The fact that you can still out it with something like Book of Eclipse and Talents, which were both heavily played in the format. And the fact that you kind of had to play a brick with Dark Magician. The card was extremely good, but nowadays we might have another better Omni Negate that is actually three Omni Negates. I think Dragoon currently goes into the experimental pile because you can still experiment with this, such a powerful card. I mean, this card is just incredible, but when it comes to Omni Negates, I think I liked Light and Darkness Dragon Lord a little bit better. Now, this card came out in Infinite Forbidden. We've been playing it a lot during the recent build. You can check them out on my channel and using Branded Banishment, summoning Albion the Branded Dragon, fusing it with the Bestial Lubelion on the field, making three Omni Negates with Light and Darkness Dragon Lord. Three mandatory Omni Negates in a fusion monster on top of your already powerful board with your Quems, Cartesias, Mercuriers, and Mirror Jade just seals the deal. I've been calling it a game ender, and it is. Shotgunning Light and Darkness Dragon Lord against something like Tenpai or Yubel really shots off their plays from step one. And the fact that it can float into a dragon when it's destroyed? Summoning an Albaz or a Furious Dragon that's in the graveyard is super, super impactful. So Light and Darkness Dragon Lord goes into the good tech category. I like this card. You should play it. Now, we have some engines, Tierluence and Yubel. Those are two separate fusion engines that require a little bit of investment in the main deck and can really boost your strategy. Let's start off with Yubel. Yubel now has a monster negate engine. You can activate Nightmare Throne, pop the spirit of Yubel in your deck, summon a Yubel, shuffle both, and summon the Phantom. Now you have a negate for Ash Blossom. And with more copies at three than the one limited instant fusion, it's a little bit more consistent. Now the problem with this is the investment both in the extra deck and the main deck. Do you really need a negate for Ash Blossom? This is why we talked about the Deer Server not being worth it because you can already play through Ash Blossom really good 
without filling up your deck with things that are not good board breakers. So you bell probably in the experimental category right now until the fusion pile with Azamina comes out, we'll probably discuss that. Tier Elements on the other hand, Tier Elements Shiren, I've been playing it in Grass Branded. It's been incredible. It can bait on an ash in the hand when you activate the effect, but when you mill 20 with grass and hit a Shire, it can get you into a Masquerade, Aquarius, and of course, Lubellion, if you hit an Albez as well. It's just an incredible quality piece of interaction that has really benefited from grass being back at one. And you probably should be playing it in your deck. So it's definitely in the good tech category. You should probably play this card specifically if you're playing grass. Now, speaking of grass, should you play grass? The answer I think is yes. This is good tech. This is the one card that you should probably be playing in your deck. Now, this does dedicate the whole deck around it. You need to be playing 60 cards. You need to be playing things like Branded and White, the Sheeran that we mentioned, but this card provides you with so much value. Hitting a gimmick puppet nightmare with grass is just chef's kiss. We've been cooking a lot. I've been doing a lot of local Chronicles videos with grass recently, and this card has just been amazing. This is the way up there in the good tech category because this makes Branded run. Now, one of my favorite techs at the moment, a stellar of the White Forest. Shout out to Raul with, you know, the, the, the Metagames GX group for coming up with this one because this has changed my life. A stellar of the White Forest is your bridge into Cartesias and Quem. Sometimes we just don't have an opening hand that has access to those spellcasters. And of course, Quem and Cartesia really are what makes the deck tick. This is the creme de la creme, the cherry on top of your board. Without that, you're not locking you're not getting into Grand Gignol, you're not getting into further interruptions during your opponent's turn. So, why a Stellar? So, sending a Stellar with Branded Fusion while having two spell cards in your hand or trap cards that you can get rid of gets you access to it. So, Branded Fusion, sending a Stellar and Albion, fusing into Lubellion and discarding a spell, triggers the Stellar to summon itself back from the grave. Then you can send another spell and you can also send your face up Branded Lost to summon Ecclesia or Quem from the deck. This bridge is so, so important for the deck that I think this currently in the 60 card build is a must. Goes straight into the good tech category. Mysterian the Dragon Crown. I've been trying to make this card work, guys. Really, I have been. This card is so, so unique and I've been putting it in and out of my deck for so long and I really want it to work. And in theory, it really should, right? So what does Mysterion do? It requires a dragon and a spellcaster, which your deck is full of. So Cartesia and Albion, Cartesia and Abyssal, Cartesia and whatever makes this card. Now, if a monster uses its activated effect to special summon itself or another monster from that type, you can target one of those monsters that was summoned and banish, non-targeting, all monsters of the same type from the field. So let me run you through how that works. Normal summon Ash, Poplar in hand, special summon itself. Now, now, a pyro has used its effect to special summon itself. You can target that monster and banish all pyro monsters from the field. Charvara, summoning itself from the hand. Now you can target that Charvara and banish all fiends from the field. Tenpai Dragon Chandra, summon itself from the hand. You can target it and banish all of your opponent's dragon. You get why this should work in theory? The problem is it has no protection, it loses attack points for each of your banished cards, and it's kind of iffy sometimes. It doesn't do much, but if you can get it reactively, for example, your opponent activates the Poplar in hand, you chain the Cartesia to summon it, then your opponent is not ready for it. So I think this is in the experimental category for sure, you should be experimenting with this and seeing how that works for you. And of course, learn how to summon it properly so that your opponent doesn't play around it. Incredible Ecclesia and Gizmic Uka. Now, this has been popularized recently. Again, the metagame GX community has been great at these unique tech options. But I gotta say, this goes into the not worth it category. I've been trying to make this work. So, why is this good? Gizmic Uka, when a monster is special summoned from the deck, can summon itself from the hand and then on summon can target a monster on the field and summon a monster from your deck with the same attribute with attack and defense equal to each other. So what you do is when Fiendsmith Requiem activates its effect to summon the Fiendsmith from the deck, you activate Uka in hand, summon it to the field, then on summon you target the Engraver and you summon Incredible Ecclesia the Virtuous from the deck. Now, this can tag out into Fallen Valbaz, which can fuse with the Engraver to make a Mirror Jade on your opponent's turn. And if you have other cards in hand, like Cartesia or Gimmick Puppet, you can actually Puppet Lock on turn zero. So in theory, this card is great. The problem is that it's only, in my experience, have been good against Snake Eyes. So Snake Eye now without Appaloosa doesn't do a lot, right? It doesn't have a way to protect itself. Now, of course, your Uka can be ashed, which really sucks because then you just lose to Thrust and Talent. But 
at least you're going to be able to resolve it. Because, you know, they go into the moon, they go into the Requiem, then the Fiendsmith, and they don't really have any protection on the field. So it will probably work if you open the one Uka in 60 cards. On the other hand, against Ubel, which is a much more popular and powerful deck at the moment, it just doesn't work because they make a Phantom before, so it's just dead in your hand. In other decks like Branded, Tenpai, Labyrinth, there's just no good targets for Uka. There's no light monster to summon. So unfortunately, I have to put this in the not worth it category. The Patchwork Engine has been a fan favorite, currently more popular in Chimera than it is in Branded. And I think I know the reason why. This is a 6 to 7 card investment in your deck. You're probably not going to see it too often in your 60 card build. People are even siding out the Chimera specifically for going second. So yeah, while this is a pretty solid engine at the moment, it probably doesn't get you to where you want to go because this usually makes specifically Chimera. And if you go first, those cards in hand really do nothing for you. While in decks like Chimera, they do a lot because they get the combo going, they fuse a lot, they get you fiends in hand. In Branded right now, it's more of a board breaker. This is why a lot of European players have been playing the whole engine in the side to go second. So I can see that happening. So maybe it's sort of experimental right now because of that side deck application. And lastly, Blazing Branded King, such a wonderful tech that I think is good goes in the good tech pile. Blazing Branded King is your way to beat board breakers. It selects a Fallen Valve as Fusion Monster on your field and it negates every other card. And against decks like Tenpai, negating all their dragons and their field spell is super, super valuable. And again, it is searchable on top of everything in your combo already. So I really recommend playing that card. It's also a free discard that can put itself back into the hand during the end phase like all the branded cards. So I suggest you really play that. Which tech cards have I missed? Leave your thoughts in the comments below about this list and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.